You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with none other than James Lascelles from the band Wheel from Finland. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, James. And how are you? I'm really well, mate. Thanks for having us. It's good to talk to you. I've been listening to the band for a while and I kind of wanted to jump on it because I know that you guys are kind of working on new stuff for your next album and I kind of wanted to jump on it before it gets released so I can kind of get inside your head right now. So that's okay. (laughs) Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I'd like to begin at Origins. How do you remember falling in love with music? I think when I was a kid, um, my dad used to play guitar to me and my brother when we were really small and... uh, I just fell in love with the instrument fairly early on. I think I started when I was maybe eight or nine years old and I was going to this Catholic primary school in North London um, and they had a school band and I always got in trouble because when I was playing guitar, I hit the thing too hard, which is something I've kind of kept. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, right away, I just I became addicted. I think the first stuff I learned was from What's the Story, Morning Glory by Oasis, which is... Um, a great start of album because it's so simple to pick up and learn and from there i never looked back really and so guitar was your first instrument uh yeah I, well i guess piano was before that actually now i think about it which i was doing for a few years but it never really grabs me the same way guitar did i think uh piano seems to require a, a level of precision that child me wasn't willing to invest and I think as an adult, um, I kind of wish I had spent a bit more time with piano because I love playing it. Actually, I'm playing some on the new album uh, just to mix it up a little bit. But at the time, yeah, guitar was my instrument. So when you talk about early influences, you already brought up Oasis. What what are some of the other bands that were right away for you? Uh, well, I guess when I was really little, uh, my dad was playing me Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin, and I was instantly nice. attracted to that just because it was big and loud. Uh-huh. And I think as I started to find my own stuff, I got really into bands like Nirvana, um, was a huge one for me. And I, I loved the hits, but I was into the really weird stuff that came out on Incesticide, those kind of albums with the, uh, the really screamy, badly recorded, grimy backing tracks. And the, I think just the, the energy and the passion in that music really spoke to me. And be, as being a progressive artist yourself, it, like speaking to the energy and the passion, I think that's something we're going to touch on later when we get into the band. But I need to know more of the origin story because you're an English musician who's found himself over in Finland. So you used to be a barman in the UK, but you found these musicians and started this band. Please take me through all that. Yeah, that's fairly accurate. Um, I was a student in Northeast England. And when I was there, I was in lots of different bands and I was working on a bar among anything that would kind of pay me. I was just grafting my way through through school. Um, And I was playing drums in a band, doing kind of funky, jazzy stuff. And um, I was singing in a band, doing kind of classic rock and metal stuff. I was writing my own kind of music, which was some of those songs ended up on our first EP from that period. But one of the bands I was in was with a a Finnish guy who went on to win idols over here. And um, he invited me over to play a few gigs with him and it paid money, which was quite different to what I was used to. So um, the the work picked up. I think I flew here eight or nine times in 2009 and I was spending my money on flights. So I ended up thinking, why not just go all in and move over there and see what happens? I did the pop thing for a while and it just wasn't for me. Like, uh, I'm not highly opinionated about this. I think pop music and prog can exist in the same world, but it just didn't do anything for me and it made me kind of unhappy after a point. So I quit doing that. And I set up Wheel with um, some people I've met along the way. And yeah, ever since I've been a lot happier and this feels like the right path to be on. Path being a very good word to choose. Uh, Because it seems very fortuitous that you guys all found each other. It seems like a really organic sound that you're creating. You all are kind of on the same vibe together. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels right. In all honesty, we, we've had a, a miasma of lineup changes for for regions uh, for reasons varying from you know the, the complex and rock and roll to the the very mundane and realistic. And I think uh, one of the things we hadn't anticipated is being a touring band. It really isn't the same as just playing in a rehearsal room. Um, and I guess it's not a fit for everybody. For example, Ronnie, our guitarist, who left back in November last year. 
um, he just doesn't like the touring so much. He's uh, If we toured a few weeks a year, he would love it. He'd still be in the group, but he's got a young daughter. He really likes his teaching job. And um, even though it was a hard decision for him to make, I completely understand why he decided to leave. So, yeah, those kind of fundamentals are in there, but I'm really skirting around the point here. Meeting up with people in Finland. What's wonderful about Helsinki is it's a capital city, but it's not very big. So everyone knows everyone. If you know a few people in the music scene, you will maybe one or two people removed from everybody in the music scene, which has been really useful. So uh, finding people like Santori, our drummer, it didn't actually take that long. He was actually the third guy we asked originally, um, but I'm so glad he said yes, because he's the perfect guy for this band. And uh, I could say equally good things about both of our bassists, like previously Mikko Mata and now Aki Virta, just incredibly talented musicians, so much energy on stage and such a big sound. And, um, you know, the, the thing that really attracted me to this style of music is uh, there isn't a background instrument. Everyone gets to have their voice and finds their place. And Aki especially just owns it on stage. He's huge. On recordings, he's huge. Um, yeah, it, it's worked out kind of well so far. And Aki was one of those pieces that also really fell into place. I mean, he had two days to learn all this music and then get out and do shows with you guys, right? Oh, completely. Someone had posted an Instagram story yesterday, actually, of his first gig, which was in Milan, Italy, last September. And if you can dig out any of that footage just to amuse yourself, just to look at how he does it. He'd never heard of the band before, and he's just destroying it on stage. Like, he's got this huge presence, and he's a great, great musician. Well, he obviously felt uh, passionate about the music once he heard it. I don't think he would have tr tried to sink his teeth as deeply into it as if it didn't get him at some core. So there is something that you guys share in musical chemistry, which you kind of touched on in the song The Path and The Path EP. Uh, would you like to kind of talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the three songs in the Path EP, as I mentioned before, I was a student in the UK and I was working on a band called Cassini back in the time. Uh, trying to make this kind of music and it, it just didn't work out like some people in the bands weren't that invested into it and uh, others were I was one of those ones who was and I was writing um, pretty much all the material with my brother at the time he wasn't in the band but he was an active contributor to the writing uh, and I wrote farewell the change and the path during that time uh, and out of those three songs, I think the one I can still stand behind at this stage and I don't feel I've outgrown is definitely The Path, which was, I started thinking about that. We were, the guy was called uh, Adorno, he's a musicologist, which we were studying at my school. And this guy had a theory that there are two schools of music, which in layman's terms, one is classical, which he saw as good, and one is contemporary, which he saw as bad. And um, he spoke about this, um, these two spheres of music he called them and the overlap between the two of them is where really interesting things happen and i think that's completely true um, i think all the best pop music there's something a bit special and a bit strange about it and i think all the best prog music has something contemporary in there to kind of really hang on to to make it appealing and accessible because i mean you can write the most multi-dimensional fascinating thing in the world but if no one's going to listen to it or care to understand it then it hasn't really done its job as a piece of art. So it was just exploring that idea. That's, that's a fascinating idea. I think that's something that a lot of prog bands need to learn to balance. So, yeah, well, I think it comes down to it's, it's all about the songs. And um, musicianship is extremely entertaining to watch. Um, and I think gymnastics are really impressive. But, you know, all the best prog bands that I enjoy, at least, at the core is they've got great material. And that's what makes me want to keep listening to them. Well, and two, is with the band, uh, you guys all have your own voices. Like, there is no lead instrument in your band. It's not like you guys keep saying, we don't want to be a band where it's a, a singer and then a backup band behind them. Like, you're all equal, and same with your visual appearance. You're all, you know, equal on stage. It's, yeah, that's been really important to us from the offset, and... Don't get me wrong, I love loads of bands who are doing the kind of more classic rock and roll thing where the singer's a bit of a diva and when the guitar solos are on, <laughs> loads of smoke and, and wind and kind of stuff. It's awesome, but it's just not what we wanted to make. And we right. wanted the, the king in our band is the song and what that demands, that's what we want to do. We also thought, you know, somebody is this multi-limbs 
octopus beast playing this crazy stuff and people want to see him so we're trying to pull the drums a little bit further forward on stage so people can check out what he's doing definitely because like it's a dem- democratic band from the get-go right is that harder though uh, to it must be sometimes where things get slowed down because one person's like uh, i don't know how i feel about that but do you find it's actually better in the end if you follow that process it's imperfect if i'm being completely honest there are times we do things extremely democratically and there are times when a quick decision needs to be made but most of the time we get it right and when we don't we tend to go back and go hey what could we have done better here we dig for it and uh well, we're pretty passionate about keeping it as democratic as possible um i think one of the challenging parts is because we're working with a management company in germany we've got promoters in four different countries as well and uh just the staff and trying to logistically connect to everybody is really difficult even within the bands you know we're mainly communicating through messaging um when we're not together and often we need to make quick decisions so I think there's a lot of trust as well that we we share a set of values and um, when something needs to happen, it does. But certainly with the material, the goal has always been if we've got to play these songs live, you know, two or three hundred times at least, then we might as well make sure we all definitely like the songs we're putting out. Uh, And as you said before in another interview, uh, Finnish people are very blunt, which has actually been helpful in the the way that you guys talk about ideas it's great because it, it, it's not <laughs> unkind that it's not rude although maybe it seems like that to someone who hasn't lived here it's just extremely direct you know it's a case of if it's not worth saying it won't be said so especially when you're working with people closely and you know people really well they'll just tell you bluntly what they think which is extremely helpful and it's really pushed me to improve as a writer and a musician well, it's interesting to get your point of view of it because you're from England, you've come to Finland, so you have this outsider's kind of point of view. And Finland, uh, are are you familiar with the website Reddit? Yes, I'm, I'm a big fan. All right, so I, I go on the subreddit Prog Metal quite often. Somebody posted, uh, uh, they broke down a Spotify listen, listens according to cities, and there was the top five cities for each band, and they listed a whole plethora of different metal bands. Helsinki, Finland was in the top five almost in every single band and often it was the <laughs> first one on the list. And that was the big takeaway from the post is Helsinki might be the most metal city on earth. What do you think of all that? It's extremely metal. Um, I mean, we've we've played two festivals over the past few weekends that they've been quite small. Right. And it's kind of amazing to see how well everyone's been observing the quarantine measures. I'm just throwing that in because I know we're, we're talking across an ocean and it's a very different situation in Canada. But yeah. it, the kinds of metal that are big in Finland, they're not normally progressive. Uh, I think there's a lot of classic metal here. There's a lot of symphonic metal. There's a lot of black metal. Uh, there's not so much on the prog scene. In fact, there are very few other prog bands here. So we always feel a little bit like the odd one out on the bill. Um, which is it kind of works in our favor we we kind of like being the black sheep anyway but um typically speaking they've got huge metal festivals all over finland which were uh, a country with such a small population really speaks volumes to how popular the style is here and it's probably one of the biggest um scenes there is musically in finland yeah, that's something we have to talk on because out of the musicians I've talked to recently, you're one of the very few who's actually played a show. So what was the feeling like when you first went out for the first show? It, it was surreal. I mean, uh, honestly, there was a there was definitely some kind of guilt. I think that's the first reaction I feared anyway, which is probably a very English thing to do. But I think right, right off the bat, I just thought, is this okay? And so then we were looking at the audience. And, I mean, people really were being quite smart in the crowd. No one was too close together. Uh, the numbers have been incredibly low and with the infection rate and the death rate so far, my wife, who is a nurse, um, has uh, been looking at the data um, regularly for, for what the infection rate has been. So I do think the government has done the right thing with allowing some events to open back up. I just think now we're in this this mire that the rest of the world is in where there's not really an end in sight. There's not really a plan to the end of COVID. Um 
and for that reason you're kind of uh, we're damned if we do uh, and we're kind of screwed if we don't because uh we need to generate some revenue especially because like you mentioned we're working on a on a new album we need to fund that somehow so continuing to perform is important of course we would not do so if we thought anyone was going to be at risk and based on what we've seen in the press after these two small festivals um, there's not been a spike or anything so that's really promising to see it just makes you wonder what the future is going to be like for internationally touring because that's the bread and butter for these genres like prog Absolutely. And that's, that's the million dollar question right now in everyone's mind. Uh, I want to get back to your lyrics and, uh, cause I don't often get to talk to someone who's outspoken and politically conscious. And, uh, I don't really get to talk about it on my show. Uh, but ever since everything that's been happening lately, I've been doing them letting the music do the talking. I've been playing a lot of rage against the machine lately is what Good I'm man. trying to say. <laughs> For you, when you, when Wheel started with the Path EP, it seemed like the lyrics were more personal, but then quickly with the next EP, it became more focused on a kind of political kind of things. And that continued, it seems like, with moving backwards. So do you, I just wanted to get a grasp on what your take is, what kind of, what's your headspace on the political climate in the world right now? Because you talked about not really being worried so much about an environmental or an economic disaster, but you actually see a social breakdown happening and the divide. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely felt that way back when we made the divide EP. Uh, and I think at the time we were, the, the Brexit vote had just happened and um, we'd seen the election of Donald Trump and, um, the, the rise of populism and it's a really difficult thing to get right as an artist because I think I don't really want to just go into a room and tell everyone what I think is right what you think is wrong and if you disagree with me you can fuck off because it's counterproductive and uh, I think ending the debate is kind of part of the problem I think there's got to be some kind of balance between as an artist being able to express yourself and uh, saying what your opinions are but also just wanting to be part of the discussion and how to move forward. And uh, but for example, please, the first track of the Divide EP, I wrote that after the Syrian refugee crisis had been portrayed in the media around Europe in an incredibly polarizing and negative way, uh, which just shows you the power of media. And words like swarms were being used as a collective noun to describe the people coming over, which is a word you use to describe insects, of course. Yeah, uh, And it just made me furious because it did not match the footage and it, it took this uh, awful picture of, of a, a dead boy um, on a beach, I think it was, um, for the kind of public rhetoric to begin to shift in another direction. And, you know, we're so quick to demonise that which we feel separate from or that which we don't understand. And um, I think it's just something very human about that. And I kind of think that as an artist, it's kind of my job to push back against that a little bit and just say, are you sure that's what you think? Uh, or maybe at least just get people to continue to talk about some of these issues. Because, I mean, I talk about this stuff every day with my friends and my family. It's uh, really close to my heart. We're not trying to do it to earn social media points or to, or to win a, an award or something crazy. We, we just want to talk about the, the issues that we care about. When you use your lyrics, you, you don't seem to always just point at something like the government did this in 1994 to these people and we should be mad about it. It's it's more personal. It's you pointed the crosshairs inside to how are we not a part of the problem? How are we letting these this machine keep doing the things it's doing and separate us? And how are we being so complicit to it? How do you think music can wake people up to just thinking more? Honestly, I'm not even sure it can. I just want to believe it can. Uh, <laughs> I think that's as good as it gets. Um, you mentioned Rage Against the Machine, and I, I grew up with that band. I love their music. And um, I just love the passion and the anger. You know, they, they were pissed off about the things they saw that they viewed as wrong in the world, and they spoke about it. And there was some fire in the belly. Or you think about some of the political singer-songwriters from, uh, from before like uh, Billy Bragg or Bob Dylan and um, the issues they were opposed to and, and trying to talk about. 
um, th th this stuff, I mean, that in layman's terms, it, it really pisses me off and that motivates me to write music. And I, I think, uh, especially in the time we're in, where um, just trying to get people to have a rational conversation, which I know it's never been easy and I know everything's politicised and we're, we're divided into these partisan groups where we're told that everything is conflated with everything else. So you can't talk about a singular issue. And if you do, you end up with, well, what about this? But So, you know, you end up in this circle where nothing ever really um, really changes and p people always feel like they're not educated enough to, to stand up and, and state an opinion about this stuff. Whereas I think the two smartest things a person can say are, I was wrong or I've changed my mind because, you know, surely that's the whole purpose of debate is to improve our understanding of the world around us. Um, and I think that ties in directly with the political issue. Like uh, my favourite metaphor for politics is um, when you vote, you're picking a bus journey. It's going to go to a load of places you don't want to stop at, but go for the one that's going to get you as close as possible to, to the result you want to have. And I think that really is about as good as it gets, isn't it? It really seems that way. <laughs> what else do you do? I mean, uh, again, like telling people what to think or what to vote for, that's never been something that we particularly care about. But we have causes which we have a very, very clear opinion about. For example, the death of George Floyd. That one seems like an absolute no-brainer. Reform is needed in the police force and more needs to be done, be done to oust the, um, the racism that is so rampant in all of our societies, I mean, particularly in the States. Is a passion for this uh, in the whole band? Do you guys, are you all pretty politically conscious? Yeah, I mean, um, I always make a point because I write the lyrics as the, the English guy in the group, of course, but I always make a point of we, we talk this stuff out and we hash it out together. And especially when it, it feels like such a no-brainer like this one, um, those are the ones that tend to end up in the words. But I do always check, hey, this is what the song's about. How do you feel about that? Because... I think I'll be a bit of a dick otherwise just to throw out some fairly politicized stuff that the other guys weren't so keen on. Uh, but with you guys tracking the new album and everything going on right now, I'm sure this must be fuel for the new new influences going in, seeing the chaos around you. I think absolutely. I mean, you couldn't make up what this year has been like. And um, yeah. I remember in 2016, you know, we were all saying, well, it can't get worse than this. And I've learned not to say things like that because that's a dangerous game. Uh, but we're just trying to make good art and hopefully something people find interesting. And um, all I can really say about it at the moment is it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out at some point in the future and we really like the direction it's going in and hopefully people do as well. Okay. And, and just stepping back from the lyrics too, just musically, is there any influences that are happening with you guys right now that are kind of pushing you one way or another way that you can kind of hint us towards with the new album? Um, <laughs> I think the, the influence pulls broader. I think it's more dynamic. Um, I think if you liked moving backwards, there's a very good chance you're going to like the next album. Um, we, we tried to improve on it in in every way from the ground up, from the, the instruments we've used to the way we've tracked it to what we've put into the material. And we're, we're at a point now where we've been looking at this for a long time and we're really looking forward to kind of sealing the deal, getting it sent off, getting the masters done and just getting it out there because it's, uh, I think when you're too close to something for a really long time, it, it's kind of difficult to see the forest for the trees. What advice would you give to anyone who's pursuing their dreams? Um, I guess ignore that voice in your head telling you you can't do it. Um, study and learn as many new skills as you possibly can. Um, and especially if the dream you have is a career in music. I always thought there was going to be someone who kind of steps in and, and does some of this for us, like whether it's saying that song's ready, stop now, it's done, or more basic stuff like editing or, or, or amplifier sounds, whatever it might be, like a, it really is kind of all on you. So just learn as much as you possibly can and just keep trying. And if there's something you feel you're not doing right, keep trying at it, find different people to work with and see if you inspire each other. And and if you really, really want to do it more than anything else, just find a way because there's always a way, even if it's hard. Is there anything else you'd like to say to our listeners? 
Yeah, I guess hello Canada. It's a country I'd love to visit. I'm a big fan of um, Billy Talent, who I know from over there. And um, my good friend Cody Lee Ford, who's a, a member of the European band Sewing. He's uh, also a Canadian, so um, I've heard wonderful things about your country and we hope to visit it one day in the future. But that's it. Hi from Wheel. Hi from Finland. Absolutely. I got to I gotta try to convince you as much as I can to make your way to Penticton, because if you do, I'll make sure that there will be a big crowd here for you guys. <laughs> oh, man, we'd love to be there. You've been listening to The Peach Pit. I'm talking to James Lascelles from the band Wheel. Thank you so much for time taking time to talk to me. I really hope that you guys are going to be able to do more shows. The, the whole situation in Finland and everywhere just continues to resolve itself because then you got to make your way to Canada and do a bunch of shows out here for us, okay? We'd absolutely love to. Thank you again for your time. Take care. Great. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye.